God so loved the world that he gave his son the that whosoever believes in him God bless you man God bless you and your family that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth God created Adam and Eve and God gave them a command and God told them you can eat every fruit from any tree in this garden but don't eat the one in the middle of the garden because the day you eat that fruit you will die and God was talking about spiritual death and physical death the Bible says before the day was gone Adam and Eve ate the fruit the Bible says that fruit was the fruit of disobedience and the fruit of rebellion and from the day they ate that fruit everything turned upside down chaos started in the world the first murder was recorded in the Bible a brother killed his own brother Cain killed Abel because he was jealous and envious first murder started being recorded a lot of other sins were recorded but you see, the sin you see in the world today has not been just today, it has been existing. But the Bible says a solution was provided for us. And God himself had to come to the earth in human form in order to pay the price for our sin, to redeem us. Because to be redeemed for our sin, a price needed to be paid. Because all the laws that God gave us, we couldn't fulfill it. And there is nobody on earth that can obey all the laws. Nobody on earth that can obey them. There are more than 613 laws in the Bible. Not everyone can obey it. No one can obey them. But you see, the word of God says that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, he came up upon the face of this earth in order to pay the price for our sin on that cross. So that we don't have to pay. All we have to do is surrender to him and allow him to lead us and for Jesus to pay the price for our sin he went through a lot he went through a lot of, the, of uh, he went through a lot of beatings rejection Jesus Christ went through a lot of persecution Jesus Christ underwent a lot of pain he was crucified on that cross and shed his precious blood on that cross just so he can redeem you and I. The Bible says Jesus Christ really died on the cross. Yeshua really and was buried. The Bible says when he died and was buried. On the third day. He rose from the dead. And overcame death and hell. The Bible says because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You will live forever too if you believe in him. This is the gospel. But you see, when you believe in Yeshua, that faith that you used to believe in Yeshua will begin to change the way you are. The first thing that happens when you come to Yeshua is that you become a son of God. You become adopted as a son of God. The Bible says, by the blood of Jesus Christ, all your sins are washed away. No matter the sin you've ever committed, if you choose today to repent and turn to God, your sins will be washed away. But I want to explain to you what happens when you come to this Yeshua, when you come to God. Because Yeshua paid those prices upon the cross of Calvary. Not, not just so that we can just continue to live the way we are living. No. Yeshua paid that price so that in Him we are saved. And in Him we can know God's will and walk according to that will. So for the natural man, he just thinks we are here to eat, sleep and to die. And that's life. But according to Yeshua, Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So life is not just eating, sleeping, work and you die. Life begins with Jesus. Life begins with Yeshua. Life does not begin when you got degrees, or when you got an award, or when you become the American president. Life be begins with Yeshua. Beauty without Christ is vanity. Money without Christ, vanity. Life without Christ, vanity. 
You know what vanity means? Emptiness. Emptiness. You may think, oh, I'm everything, the beauty queen of Cincinnati. And your friends clap at you, the world claps at you, but in heaven is not clapping at you. It's vanity. It's vanity. But the Bible says all these things you see will pass away. But the Bible says, My word abides forever. God's word abides forever. That's why Yeshua said, If my word lives in you, you will abide forever. That is why Jesus Christ said clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And so Yeshua is never going to force you to follow him. There are a lot of you who think God is going to hold you with a chain and say, follow me, follow me. No. You, you make up your own mind. You have to choose who you're going to follow. A lot of people think we are really religious by gods. But when the gay pride are parading their stuff, they are not by gods. But a lot of people think, oh, you, you guys are preaching on a loudspeaker. You guys are by gods. We're not by gods at all. We're just obeying the master. Should we obey the master or you? The master said, go around the world and preach the gospel. During the time of Jesus, there, was no, there were no speakers. How do you think Jesus was preaching? Oh, guys, oh, guys. No. He was screaming from the top of his lungs. How do you think Jesus was speaking to 5,000 people? Uh, guys, you know, uh, you have to... Uh... No! He was screaming from the top of his lungs. And some people say, oh, Jesus was not yelling. Okay, show me the scriptures. He was, was screaming from the top of his lungs. He was speaking to 5,000, 10,000. That's why he will go to the mountain and use the natural technology. Because when you're on the mountain, those who are under can hear you better. The wind takes your voice and travels with it. But you see, this Yeshua, when he came upon the face of the earth, he came in order to save us from the destruction to come. He came to save us from sin. The Bible says that sin is anything that is against the will of God. And you see, the will of God is for us to be saved and know Him personally and then walk according to His ways. But when you start following your own way, you are actually following the devil's way. That is why Yeshua came in order to restore everything. And that is why I'm preaching this, this good news of salvation to let you know that the first, the first thing to do in order to know God personally is to acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge God is right and you are wrong. Acknowledge the sin that you've committed. Acknowledge the rebellion that you have been living in. And allow God to restore you. Allow God to help you. Because salvation is actually the beginning of the journey. When you get saved by Christ, your journey begins. There are a lot of people that have not even started the journey yet. When you get saved by Christ, that's when your journey begins. And on that journey, you will meet other storms on the road. But because God will be with you, He will help you till the end. But a lot of people do not understand. A lot of people take their relationship with God for granted. A lot of people think God is a fairy tale. But you know, there is a verse that says that in Matthew 7, the Bible says only a few will go to heaven. I pray you among the few. It's better you, you miss the crowd and follow the cloud than to follow the crowd and miss the cloud. And so a lot of people today, they are, full, they, are, they, are, they are following the path of destruction. But Jesus said, I am the narrow way. Jesus said, enter through the narrow way. That leads to life. And Je Jesus said, only a few people go through that narrow way. So what we are preaching here is the gospel of salvation. To tell you that Yeshua, who is God, came in human form upon the face of this earth to pay the price for our evil. The Bible says that on that cross, he shed his blood for the sinner. He shed his blood for the wicked man, the wicked woman. And on that cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. But they do not know what they are doing. On that cross, Jesus offered forgiveness to mankind. Forgiveness was released to us on that cross. And so no matter what you've ever done in this life, if you repent and turn to God, all your sins will be washed away. That's what the blood of Jesus does. The Bible says the blood of Jesus washes away the sin of the world. 
when you turn to Christ that blood begins to wash you up your sins away and the Bible says the word of the word of the word of God to renew your mind and so today is the day of salvation my friend call upon the name of Jesus he's waiting on you but he won't wait forever a lot of people say oh God is waiting on me God won't wait forever because God is ancient. He has his own time. He's coming back soon. You are the one growing older. Years ago, you were 12 years. How old are you now? You're getting old. You're getting old. But God never gets old. The Bible calls him the ancient of days. So don't be say, oh, I'm God. God is waiting on me. You have to make time and repent and turn to God. As I'm preaching this word of God, I'm not even mentioning your sin, but you know what you are doing that's wrong. Because God created everyone with a consciousness of good and of, 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 of what's right. So you know very well what you are doing that is not in line with God. And when we are preaching about repentance, those are the things that you need to go to God and put it before God and ask God to help you with them. So today is the day of salvation, friends call upon the name of Yeshua and you shall be saved the Bible says except a man is born again he will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God your life is your life is at stake and in danger if your life is not in God's hand yet but today you can have a relationship with God today you can make it new with God today may, today may be your last day to hear about Yeshua this may be your last opportunity to hear about him and you may never hear about him again this may be the last opportunity and the last moment of your life. You never know what can happen. Tomorrow is not promised. But God is giving you a second chance today. If you call upon His name for the salvation of your soul, you shall be saved. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, He came to die for those, for the sinners. The Bible says we're all born in sin shipping in iniquity and the bible says the wages of that sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life god has a precious a precious gift for you you can receive that precious gift today all you need to do is to surrender and allow god to come in you have to truly repent because if you don't repent and you die in your sin you will go to the lake of fire the lake of fire is a place it's a place that is reserved for those who died without the love of Christ God does not send anybody to hell people go there by themselves by their own choice people go there by rejecting the love of God that's why people go there but God, is, but God is giving you a great privilege and a great opportunity to be saved and you can be saved today you don't have to continue living in darkness and in sin the wages of sin is death it's bringing death to your life you may look good on the outside your friends and your family members may clap for you the nation may clap for you people may clap for you on your TikTok but is heaven clapping for you? Are you in line with God? Are you in sync with God? This is why we preach this gospel of salvation. And so today, if you want to turn to God and you're asking what you need to do, you need to truly repent and turn to Him. Repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of action. For example, if you want to go to Washington DC and you change your mind not to go there, you're definitely not going to go there. Because your mind is going to affect your action. In the same way, when the Bible calls you to repent, it means change your mind, put it on God. When you change your mind, you put it on God, the Spirit of God takes over. And now the Spirit of God helps you in your action. And so God is giving you a privilege. The reason I'm saying this is because uh, life is short on this side. And there's no time. You may think you have a lot of time. You don't realize how time is going and how you're getting old and you can die at any time. 
Today you can die at a younger age, you can die at an older age. You can die at 16, you can die at 10, you can die at 25, you can die at 50, 40. Whatever time God has decided for you to go, you can go at any time. But if you die, where will you go? Because a lot of people can say, oh, when I die, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to planet Mars. Are you sure what you are talking about? Even your mind is, is doubting you. But you. But you are saying it with your lips. If I die, I'm going to go to Mars. I've met a lot of people and I talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Some people even tell me when they die, they're going to come back as an apple tree. I'm like, what are you talking about? There are so many type of beliefs out here. But, it, but there's only one way to heaven. There are so many ways that lead to hell. That lead to condemnation. But there's only one way that leads to God. And that's Yeshua. Yeshua is the only perfect person that has ever lived on this earth without a sin. And Yeshua manifested true love upon the cross of Calvary. He delivered us and set us free from bondage. And today, you can be set free from that bondage. You can be made whole. You can be made new. If only you call upon the name of Jesus. Your past does not hold you down when you come to Christ. When you come to Jesus, your past will not hold you down. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. When you come to Jesus Christ, your past is buried. Your past is buried when you come to Jesus. And so your past does not affect you no more. Whether you were a murderer, a thief, a porn addict, homosexual, whatever you were in the past. When you come to Jesus Christ, it is eliminated. You become a new person in Christ. But today, are you going to make up your mind to call upon His name for the salvation of your soul? Because you see, time is running out. But Yeshua is giving you today a second chance and another privilege to turn to Him. So call upon Him, my friends. Do not die in your sin. Because the wages of sin is death. The more you sin, the more you are dying. You may not see it in the natural. But spiritually you are dying. But only Jesus can give life to you. And you can receive that life today. You don't have to continue living in darkness. Pain. Bitterness. Pride. Anxiety. Depression. You can find life in Christ. You can have peace and joy in Christ. But you're going to have to make up your mind. Whether you want to turn to Him or you want to continue in your evil. But whatever way you're going to choose, just know that whatever you sow in this life, you're going to reap it in the afterlife. The Bible says if you sow evil and corruption, you reap, uh, you reap it in the afterlife. But if you sow righteousness with God, you reap it in the afterlife. Just like a seed you plant in the ground. If you put an apple seed in the ground, it's not a banana um, it's not an orange fruit that's going to come out of it. It's an apple tree. So as you are, if you are sowing evil in this world, in the afterlife, don't just think, oh, I'm going to go to heaven. No. You have to sow righteousness with God. What is righteousness? Right standing with God. In alignment with God. What God goes with, you go with it. And even if you stumble, God will help you to stand back up and continue the, the walk. The Bible says, a righteous man may fall seven times, but he rises back up again. A righteous man. That's the definition of a righteous man. He may fall seven times, but he rises back up again. That's someone who walks with God. But now, if you don't walk with God, don't just wake up and say, Oh, I'm going to heaven. No, it doesn't work like that. The Bible says, Except a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so, God is calling you today. It doesn't matter the sin you've committed in your life. He's giving you a second chance today. We're not condemning anybody here. We used to be in darkness before, before God saved us. God can save you today. He can make everything new about you today. But, are you going to call on Him today? Or are you going to continue living in darkness? Because you see, my friends, there is a day coming called the Judgment Day. On that day, some will be crying, some will be rejoicing. What side are you going to be on? Daniel 12 verse 2 says, 
on judgment day some will rise to eternal life and some will rise to eternal condemnation what size are you, what side are you gonna be on on the side of eternal life or on the side of eternal condemnation it's not god's will for you to be condemned